partner, we now go to the far north, no? Um, Ilocos. Ito ang baluarte, no? Isa sa mga presidential ball natin, no? Si BBM. And uh, meron tayong pribilehyo na makakwentuhan ngayong araw na ito ang isa sa kanyang mga pamangkin na sumabak na rin sa politika. No? Uh, tumatakbong uh, re-election na si pagkagobernador sa Ilocos Norte. May kukonsidera natin bagito pa siya. Una siyang naging board member at nung ang graduate na ang kanyang ina na si Senator Amy Marcos ay siya naman na nag-take over at, at tumakbo bilang governor. Nung unang pagtakbo niya, ano po siya? Dahil nag-back out ang kanyang kalaban na si uh, Congressman Rudy Farinas. Pero this time, medyo magiging mainit ang labanan sa Ilocos Norte. Aba, hindi birong kalaban. Uh, isa sa mga, ang, ang description dito kay Manong Rudy, no? Rudy Farinas, ay isa sa mga brilliant na, na kongresista, no? mambabatas. At uh, isa sa napakahaba ang karanasan sa pa, 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 pagsisilbi, paninilbihan bilang isang uh, local uh, executive at isang uh, kongresista, isang lawmaker. So, mapapasabak talaga itong, um, itong bisita natin sa 2022 elections. In the run-up to the 2022 elections, we go local. We look into the politics in your province, city, and barangay and talk to the leaders who have a direct hand in shaping your lives. I'm Jay Taruk. And I'm Cheryl Kwasin. As, As they, they say, say all, all politics, politics is, is local. Matthew Joseph Marcos Manotok is the youngest son of Senator Aimee Marcos and PBA Hall of Fame coach Tommy Manotok. And it seems like he's got the best of both worlds. After finishing a psychology degree from Claremont McKenna College in California, he got a certificate in sports management in the University of California. He then became a basketball coach and co-founded the Espiritu Manotok Basketball Management, which handles more than 80 PBA players. Year 2016 marks his first official foray into politics when he became senior board member of the province of Ilocos Norte. In 2019, he replaced his mother, Aimee Marcos, as governor of Ilocos Norte. This coming May, Matthew is seeking re-election, but also running for governor is Ilocos 1st District Representative Rodolfo Fariñas. Will this third-generation Marcos politician be able to keep his family's hold of Ilocos Norte? Tonight, we welcome Ilocos Norte Governor and Re-Electionist, Matthew Marcos Manoto. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Sir Jay. Thank you for having me. All right. Ms. Cheryl, would you like to do the honors of asking? Aba, first... ang una ko nang itatanong kasi pag sinabi mong Marcos Manoto, parang walang kalaban. Gusto ko nang unang itanong, Governor Matt, may kalaban po ba kayo sa darating na eleksyon? An opposed Opo, si former Congressman Rudy Pop ang uh, nag-file po bilang uh, governor for uh, this uh, upcoming election po. Aha. Okay. Pero di ba? Bigat pero, yung kalaban niya, partner, ha? Um, o, oh, pero the last time kasi, di ba? Nag-giveaway. Um, nag-drop siya ng, ano, oh. ng uh, candidacy niya as governor. Right. Um, he filed for governor as well. Uh, in 2019, po, uh, Mom Cheryl, but uh, he later withdrew. And uh, well, this time it seems he's a bit more serious. So uh, we shall see. And uh, looking forward to see what the uh, Ilocanos decide. Kamusta ang, uh, kamusta po ang uh, relationship? Uh, kasi alam nyo, yung Farinas, ang mga Marcos, di ba? Uh, matatagal ng ano talaga yan, mga political families. But uh, kamusta ang uh, relasyon ninyo in terms of uh, politics? Uh, would you consider rivals pa rin ang uh, dalawang pamilya? O strategic, nagkakaroon lamang ng mga pagposisyon? Pag, uh, uh, how would you assess your relationship with the Farinas as uh, governor? Well, uh, to be honest, Jason, it's uh, we're not on speaking terms. Uh, 
<laughs> and I wouldn't call it uh, enemies or rivals. Uh, we don't see it as such. Um, it's kind of uh, ebbed and flowed and uh, been uh, friends and uh, so-called rivals over the years now. Uh, it's a long, uh, there's a long history and uh, things have changed uh, depending on the uh, season or on the uh, term, I should say. Uh, but as of now, to be honest, uh, uh, former Congressman Rudy filed, uh, I, in, in large part due to the fact that my cousin, uh, Sandro Marcos, the son, the eldest son of uh, my uncle Bong, uh, filed for congressman in the first district against Congressman Ria Farinas, who is uh, obviously uh, former Congressman Rudy's daughter. Mm -hmm. So, uh, are you saying it's getting personal? <laughs> uh, well, it, I guess it's always been a, a bit personal. I think uh, parents are naturally protective of their kids, and uh, it's you know something that uh, I fully understand. Mm -hmm. But uh, und undoubtedly, uh, it had something to do with it. But if 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 um, Sandro didn't file his candidacy, he would have not um, uh, done also yeah, as governor. I believe so, Ma'am Cheryl. I can't uh, speculate now as uh, with regard to his reasons, but I believe so. Uh, in fact, in 2016, if I'm not mistaken, he uh, has long since announced his retirement yeah. um, from uh, politics. And uh, uh, obviously, uh, uh, you know, filing is uh, not really retired. Mm -hmm. uh, Gusto ko lamang mag-backtrack ng kaunti, partner Cheryl, ano? Um, Governor, uh, clearly, ang influence mo sa sports ay yung tatay mo, no? I heard, uh, ang galing mo sa golf, eh. Parang handicap mo is two or three, according wow. to uh, Senator JV. Oh, magaling ito. Uh, well, ang tatay niya talagang sportsman talaga. And uh, yung, yung pagkahilig mo at kagustuhan mong pumasok sa politika, saan galing ito? No, I know the obvious answer is from, of course, your mom and uh, Uncle Bong. Pero meron ka bang personal reason why why you entered politics? Actually, uh, Sir Jay, wala talagang hilik, no? Uh, to be honest, uh, you know, everyone in the law house also knows um, na talagang uh, accidental or incidental politician ko ako, or public servant uh, more so. Um, I never aspired to be uh, an official. Um, you know, uh, everyone knows my frustrations and my difficulties with the job. Uh, a reluctant um, a leader ko ako. Um, I was very happy to be a dumb jock and I still <laughs> consider myself a dumb jock. Um, I was uh, quite contented uh, working in sports. Well, uh, as you said, I, I grew up playing sports uh, quite seriously. And then uh, when it dawned on me na mong malabo yung pangarap ko po na maging Tiger Woods, <laughs> I uh, soon decided to become a sports agent. So uh, we still have a sports agency in Espiritu Manotok Basketball Management. Mm -hmm. And uh, in 2000, 16, however, uh, my mom, uh, to be honest, my mom asked me if I wanted to become a bokal. Uh, unbeknownst to me, of course, what a bokal really is, and I think a lot of people in Philippine politics still struggle uh, or still don't know. No? Or in, in, in mga kapabayan po natin, hindi po nila alam kung ano po yung bokal. The question is always, Consejal ba yan? Uh, basically, yes, it's a Consejal for the province. So. Uh, you know, especially how, with how difficult my uh, first term as governor has been. Uh, you know, sometimes I look back and uh, uh, reflect that as a group, that this would have all happened. <laughs> uh, maybe I would have uh, uh, decided to not become Bukha because it's a slippery slope, as they say. Mm -hmm. So, ngayon, naging Bukal ka or board member uh, back um, uh, six years ago, tama ba ako, Gov? Tapos, right. ng, almost. Okay. Mas madali, mad, madali dali yon ng kaunti kesa sa pagiging governor. Kasi governor, buong probinsya na. So, 
um, umabot pa sa point na no, this thing is not for me. Uh, family lang ba ito? Pressure ba ito ng family? Or you've come to embrace the job dahil nakita mo yung pwede mong gawin para sa probinsya? Uh, well, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Um, it was still my decision, of course, in 2019. Ultimately, ako pa yung sign ng uh, COC. But uh, obviously, I felt that um, certain uh, familial responsibility um, and sense of duty, uh, I felt I had to step up uh, on behalf of my family. Um, but it was my decision. And uh, uh, you're right, I'm Cheryl. Uh, Bokal is a far, far cry from uh, uh, being governor. And, uh, you know, uh, I learned quite a bit uh, as Bokal, but uh, you truly, uh, the executive uh, department is completely different and demands a, uh, and demands one's time uh, com- completely. Na talagang uh, implementation, uh, enforcement, uh, assistance, uh, you, you name it, basically. From uh, the on call na kami, and uh, you know, it's uh, especially in this time of COVID, uh, it's hard to you know even drop my phone for five minutes because you know I have anxiety that I may be missing something uh, that I need to address. No? So uh, it's something that I've learned to embrace, as you say. And uh, there are many parts of the position or uh, the job that, that I now enjoy, uh, that uh, I find fulfilling. But uh, of course, um, I don't necessarily see myself as a public official or as, uh, uh, as a politician. And, uh, you know, um, <laughs> if, it weren't for, uh, if it weren't for COVID, honestly, uh, you know, I, I was always saying to myself that I, I'll do one term, you know, I'll be... Uh, I'll be a seat warmer, but uh, obviously uh, COVID has uh, changed things and I want to accomplish uh, a lot more things in uh, you know this next term, hopefully, if uh, the Lohanos give me a chance. Let me shoot a straight uh, question to you, no? uh, Governor Matt. Ang makakalaban mo e eh, dating majority floor leader ng House of Representatives, si Manong Rudy ay nakahabang experience sa politics, both local, and dito sa Kongreso, ano, um, paano mo nakikitang tatalunin mo itong si Manong Rudy sa 2022 election sa pagiging governor? Well, uh, to be honest, Jay, um, you know, as, as you know, uh, the Solid North, uh, Ilocanos are fiercely loyal uh, to my family, especially in District 2, uh, where our home city of Batak is. And, um, you know, uh, thankfully, uh, I think over the years, uh, well, uh, you know, it's something that uh, has always interested me. No, kung, kung bakit pa talaga ganito ang mga ilakano? Why do they, you know, it's a weird question to ask, but frankly, why do they love us so much? Now, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit obsessive. It's a bit uh, strange, to be honest. And, uh, but I've seen it and I felt it. And I think it's due to the fact that the ilakanos are very proud. Uh, we're very proud. A bunch and uh, a son of Ilocos rose to the highest position of the country and he never turned his back on the mm-hmm. country. He prioritized Ilocos, Ilocos Norte, the region, uh, of course, at large, uh, Ilocandia as we call it. And uh, of course, uh, you know, we we like to think that the Marcos family has always been there for the province of Ilocos. Uh, you know, obviously, my uncle, uh, Uncle Bong, and uh, my mom. Uh, you know, we're long-term governors of the, of the province, and uh, I think Ilocanos appreciate um, the fact that we listen to them. Uh, we're humble people. Uh, you know, we don't flaunt, um, you know, anything. We, we just keep our heads down. We keep quiet, and, and we work, and we work for them. And uh, you know, I think that loyalty uh, goes both ways. So it's it's something that. You know, really is heartwarming, and uh, I don't take lightly um, the the love and support that uh, we are so lucky to have from Ilocanos. So, um, you know, I, I think uh, that that's always been, I think, our 
SOP or our or MO is we just uh, mm -hmm. continue to put the province first and uh, we don't worry too much about um, you know uh, difficulties or rivals uh, we just keep trying to do the best we can uh, for the province mm -hmm. Sabi nga ni Jay um, Governor Matt ay hindi biro yung experience kung pag, pagbabasihan natin yung tagal sa, uh, sa politika ni uh, Congressman Rudy Farinas and ikaw, uh, ka isang term ka pa lamang ng governor and um, kung papalarin ay will be your second term maliban dun sa sa loyalty no, ng mga Ilocano sa inyong pamilya, doon sa Taking panahon sa unang termo as governor at nagkataong pa na talagang very challenging for all the politicians now um, dahil umasok tayo nagkaroon tayo ng covid nagkaroon tayo ng pandemya ano ano na ano ano yung mga nagawa mo sa probinsya ng Ilocos Norte All right. Uh, before you answer that, uh, Governor Ay, Matt, <laughs> we'll just pause for a short break. Kung marami pa tayong itatanong dito kay Governor Matt, you're still watching All Politics is Local, we'll be right back. Sana mas Two all star squads compete. As they play for pride. For the MVP. MVP award tonight goes to and for the win. For the game we've always loved, we're always a fan. Watch the 71st NBA All-Star Game on NBA TV Philippines, TV5, and One Sports. Welcome back. You're still watching All Politics is Local with us, Ilocos Norte Governor and pre-electionist Matthew Marcos Manotok. At katulad ng aking uh, naiwan na tanong kanina, Governor um, uh, Manotok, yun nga, uh, pag, kung pagbabasihan natin yung haba ng serbisyo, medyo talo po tayo kay Congressman Rudy Farinas. Pero... May advantage po kayo because you're the incumbent governor. So what have you done on your first term, especially sa gitna pa ng pandemia sa Ilocos Norte? Thanks, Ma'am Cheryl. Well, of course, uh, COVID was the largest crisis that we've all faced. And uh, I think if we take a look at the numbers, Ilocos Norte has fared better uh, than, than most provinces uh, in terms of our COVID um, our relief efforts, obviously. Uh, Across the board, no, and uh, my ponamin na hindi lang health, no, but also economic programs, uh, cash for work, IX to pad, uh, financial assistance, uh, pop up events, uh, MSME assistance, sorry, sorry, store uh, assistance, and dami po talaga, no. Uh, of course, uh, we saw COVID uh, wreak havoc in all sectors, and uh, uh, I'm quite confident. Uh, that uh, well, I, I can say no, that uh, uh, I, I like to think that we did uh, a, f a fair job uh, in terms of our COVID response. Uh, of course, ASF uh, was another difficulty uh, that we faced recently. We were one of uh, the last provinces also to get to, to be infected by ASF, mm -hmm. and uh, we had to uh, a lot of assistance for our livestock growers. Um, and I think. Um, Generally speaking, Ilocanos have seen uh, certain projects, you know, lots of infrastructure going up 
uh, the big three, for example, that uh, <clears throat> I inherited from my mother, uh, those being the Capital Ex Extension, the Ayan, and uh, Marco Stadium. Uh, lots of infrastructure projects, of course, the FMR, the usual. And uh, parks has been one of my um, thrusts ever since uh, uh, we made it a point to open uh, uh, parks, public parks in each town. And uh, we've continued this. We have Barangay Echo Parks now, wherein uh, we allotted each Barangay 200,000 pesos to improve their Barangay Echo Parks or establish their own Echo Parks. Because I saw that uh, obviously public spaces, outdoor spaces, uh, were ideal uh, amidst COVID. And uh, this is not just for children, but the whole family, including seniors. At uh, meron din uh, agricultural component po, yung mga gulayan ng barangay uh, farm and composting. So this is a three-faceted uh, project ng barangay Echo Park. Something that I'm very passionate about kasi uh, I think it's one of the, um, siguro masasabi po natin na uh, neglected areas ito pong parks. In fact, uh, I even asked my mother, sino ba in charge of parks sa atin? Kasi hindi naman yata DNR. So it's, uh, you know, there's no national agency involved, uh, specifically uh, responsible for the development of parks and public spaces. And uh, I think it's uh, quite unfortunate that parks close amidst COVID, where we know naman uh, parks are safe for COVID. So I think, uh, you know, if all, all of these projects um, put together, uh, hopefully uh, paint a, a decent picture on my behalf. I guess in comparison uh, dun sa pamamalakad ni Governor Aimee before, uh, parang may similarities akong nakikita, Governor, Governor Matt. Ano? May mga cultural projects siya. I remember nag-collaborate siya with, uh, with a number of artists na dinala niya dyan sa Ilocos. Ano? Nagkaroon pa ng mga, ano, eh, mga public art uh, partner, Cheryl. Eh. Nakita ko yun eh, sa may sand dunes. Um, eto ba ipagpapatuloy mo at eto ba ang hinihiling ng mga taga Ilocos yung continuance ng Marcos brand of uh, governance dyan sa Ilocos? Yes, so uh, we actually um, launched a stack stones uh -huh. uh, installation. So these are oversized stones yeah. uh, or boulders that are stacked and there are two of them. So um, um this is a new art installation uh, in line, as you, sir, as you say, Sir Jay, uh, with uh, the senator's thrust uh, when she was governor. And uh, these stacked stones are uh, obviously a bit like uh, Vegas. And uh, ito is uh, solar powered and uh, made of resin and uh, locally made by uh, local artists. Uh, just last week also, we opened up our uh, Pawai Lake Water Park, which is mm -hmm. below Malacanang of the North and the Chinese Garden. And uh, we are developing and uh, integrating um, and activating the entire Pawai Lake. Kasi alam po natin na talagang maganda po ang uh, Pawai Lake. And uh, I look forward to doing that. And uh, ito pong water park in uh, partnership with Inflatable Islands is the first water park uh, in the north so we're looking forward uh we keep pushing no, for tourism alam po nat natin na talagang uh, uh malaking loss no, sa tourism sector and uh, you know that, that that's one of the biggest programs we had during covid was what we called tlcp tourism live Day continuity program wherein uh it was basically you know uh supplying uh the salaries of all of these uh, tourism workers and uh, also under a uh, pay now work later scheme if these were uh, uh, mga handicraft makers, the mga bell weavers, uh, kasela, uh, kalesa drivers, no, we had to uh, sustain all of them because uh, after agriculture, it's a great tourism second largest uh, industry. Po namin. Mm -hmm. Kirina, pinag-usapan natin na sportsman. Malapit sa'yo ang sports talaga. What have you done na mga projects or programs sa Ilocos Norte? Pagdating naman sa sports, ito ba isang, ito ba isang proyekto din na gusto mong uh, i-priority? Kasi dahil nga malapit sa'yo at alam mo po ano rin yung kahalagahan, lalo na sa mga kabataan. Oh. 
Papa, I'm sure. Uh, one of the first things I did was uh, uh, in instituted, uh, legislated, and allotted funds for, uh, well, not personally, of course, with the help of my sanguine plan, Luigan, uh, we established a sports scholarship um, because I saw that uh, our provincial scholarship had the usual uh, community leaders and academic uh, and tech book. But uh, for me, of course, uh, major sentimental po ang sports sa akin. So I said, why not have sports scholars? Uh, we're also, we also established a sports academy wherein our best athletes are provided for totally. Um, and uh, pag training na po, we uh, house them, feed them, train them, educate them to the And uh, as mentioned, uh, Marcos Stadium is also under construction. Um, this is our main arena. Uh, uh, parang track and field po. So we're looking forward to opening that up. Partner Cheryl, nako. Dahil uh, minsan lang naman tayo magkaroon ng bisita na Marcos, ano, diretsyo hina natin ito dahil pinag-uusapan rin lang, no, sa national news. Itong uh, disqualification case dito kay uh, sa uncle, ni Governor Matt. No? Um, it's interesting to find out, uh, Governor, no, ano ba ang uh, sentiments or your thoughts about the Marcos Jr. disqualification case. Ano ang masasabi mo dito? Well, Jay, it's a tough question, but uh, Siguro, obviously, we uh, 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 take our cue from the legal process, but uh, uh, in my opinion, I hope he's given uh, an opportunity, obviously, to run uh, for president, and I hope we can let the people decide. And uh, tingin mo, of course, maraming, uh, maraming nang babash dito kay Uncle Mo. No? At marami rin namang dumidepensa. Pero ikaw bilang miyembro ng pamilya, uh, bakit ba kinakailangang uh, patuloy na at uh, wag nang i-disqualify si Uncle Bongbong na tumakbo bilang Pangulo? Why should we give him this check? Siguro, the question is why should we disqualify him? <laughs> No, I think uh, sana uh, innocent until proven guilty. No, um, it seems to be a uh, legality, a technicality. But uh, as I said, I hope uh, we leave it to the Filipino people uh, and to their votes uh, when the time may come. <laughs> May influence ba sa yung ano kalaki ang influence ni Uncle Bongbong mo and of course your mom sa pagiging governor mo or sa pagpapatakbo bilang governor ng Ilocos Norte. Yeah, of course, Ma'am Cheryl. How, how, how can she not be, no? Uh, she birthed <laughs> me. She raised me. Um, I'm a product, uh, quite literally, of <laughs> my mother. But of course, um, I'm of a different generation. I'm of a different yeah. background. And so there are differences also. But uh, I, I, I do consider them role models they're imperfect but you know that's my mom and that's my uncle and i try to um imitate them in certain ways to be honest and uh, adopt their uh well i guess what i deem uh, best practices uh, mm -hmm. for example um of course uh, i can immediately uh, compare myself to my mom since uh i was her successor so to speak no? At uh, ang dami pong niyang nagawa sa Ilocos Norte, especially in terms of lowering our poverty rate, which I think was floating uh, almost about 20% when she took office. And when she left office, I think it was below 5%. Um, and, you know, the uh, gratitude, the uh, love that she enjoys across the province is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, really, really uh, strong. No? Um, and my mom is always... Um, very well prepared. Now, that's one thing that I've learned from her. Uh, she's always well read. Uh, she makes sure that uh, um, she knows the ins and outs of uh, anything that she has to tackle. So, uh, preparation. Um, and to be honest, just as I mentioned before, uh, being modest. You know, I think uh, Marcos, we live in fear of being um, seen as mayabang or mayaman. No? So it's something that we grew up with wherein, uh, you know, we, we, we try to be as simple, uh, as simple and as, uh, you know, um, 
down to earth as possible uh, because we'll, we, we always live with that uh, dark cloud above us. You know? um, and uh, my mom just worked so, so hard. She's a workaholic, she's a busy body. Uh, and now that I'm in this position, I think I have that same um, nervous energy, ba? anxiety, uh, to always keep working now. Um, for my uncle, naman, um, I think the thing I appreciate most is um, his dignity, how he doesn't engage in any mudslinging, uh, no matter what may be thrown at him. Uh, for the most part, he's remained uh, very dignified and uh, you know doesn't engage in any let's just say uh, vitriol or uh, bad blood talaga no? and uh, i appreciate that bago tayo mag break governor matt eh ang tanong ko po eh to may kinalaman diyan sa pawai uh, lake water park eh? uh, bakit daw ho binuksan ito um, o binuksan ito in spite of na na determine nagkaroon daw ng presence of e coli bacteria Before you answer, Governor Matt will just pause for a short break. When we return, we find out where our candidates stand on certain issues. Of course, yung hanging question natin, sasagotin ni Gov. You're still watching All Politics is Local. We'll be right back. Belief. It can be hard to find. But we've seen what belief can do. Believing in just one person, in the moment they need it most, can change everything. So to every winter athlete, to every person watching, I want to say, I believe in you. We all do. Catch all the exciting games for free on the Beijing Winter Olympics Channel. Available on Channel 198 SD and Channel 298 HD. Available exclusively to active Signal subscribers from February 4 to 20. together. Watch the Olympic Winter Games Beijing 2022 on Signal TV, One Sports, One Sports Plus, and Signal Play. Official broadcasters of Beijing 2022. Welcome back. You're still watching All Politics is Local. Still with us is Locus Norte Governor and Re-Electionist Matthew Marcos Manoto. Gov, yung hanging question po natin, um, nagkaroon ho ba? Uh, na, nakita ko ba yung E. coli bacteria dun sa lake? And in spite of the warning, binuksan pa rin natin. Ano pong sagot na dito? Uh, po, Sir Jay, uh, DNR conducted a water test that uh, mataas nga po ang uh, polyform levels dito mm. and uh, sa Pawai Lake. But uh, we cooperated, uh, coordinated with and consulted uh, DNR. Uh, I personally uh, spoke to uh, Secretary Roy kasi mm -hmm. uh, Secretary Roy Simatu, of course, mm -hmm. pasensya na po. Uh, first name basis na po kami kasi uh, he's our town mate no? uh, from Ilocos Norte din. Uh, in fact, ang uh, baby brother niya ay uh, mayor sa Ilocos. Mm -hmm. And uh, they gave us the go-ahead naman. Uh, to open uh, with the caveat na kailangan mag-ingat at uh, no swimming talaga sa lake. Um, so, obviously, uh, there will be instances na uh, the uh, person will fall into the lake, but they just have to wash up. You know? And uh, as far as I've heard naman po, uh, there are many other uh, destinations that uh, uh, are still in operation na mataas din ang coliform levels. Coliform level. so, uh, but we're working with DOST uh, to obviously treat the water, uh, the uh, septage. Uh, we're working with the local communities sa livestock po nila kasi yung mga carababi hata uh, isa pa yan. So uh, it'll be a community effort that will uh, uh, undergo to ensure na talagang uh, safe Um, uh, Pawai Lake Water Park and um, in the meantime the safeguards are in place 
Okay. Uh-huh. As long as talagang may go signal and clearance from DNR, mm-hmm. that should be okay. And then like what you've said po, po na you're doing something about it para bumaba yung coliform uh, level. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, we're, we're, we're closely closely working with the DNR. Uh, they're our friends and partners. Wala ang problema po. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Balikan ko lamang po kanina bago yung lightning round partner ano bago mo simulan mm-hmm. na mention mo kanina na um si Senator Aimee really worked hard para ibaba yung poverty level from 20% when she left now at 5%. So how now under you how is the poverty level in Ilocos Norte? Kasi itinuturing pa rin itong gov na pinaka isa sa mga Uh, poorest provinces? Uh, not at all, uh, Ma'am Cheryl. I think the latest was uh, maybe just above six or seven, mostly due to COVID and because of our stats are quite old. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, Ilocos Norte is a, uh, a first class province. Uh, you know, our poverty levels are quite low. Uh, everything is quite stable and clean. And uh, I hope uh, everyone can come see. Uh, our province for themselves and uh, you, you'll see uh, what uh, where we are uh, the, the true picture uh, I recall na may mga nagsasabi na mababa po ang uh, wealth ng Ilocos Norte well Ilocos Norte is a little province uh, we're, we're, we're only about uh, over 600,000 people so syempre po uh, we can't compare to the big boys kumbaga uh, we're a small province but uh, we take care of our people and uh, poverty level is quite low. Our, uh, everyone comments on the cleanliness and uh, the infrastructure, of course. And uh, uh, we're, we're in a good place and uh, we will continue to improve. Ano yung pinakamalaking naging challenge for you na kagaya yan para mapanatiling mababa yung poverty level or yung COVID response? Ano yung pinakamalaking challenge for you sa first term mo as governor? Yeah, well, you know, there's nothing more important than jobs and livelihood, di ba? Uh, and I think that still applies the po sa COVID-19. So, you know, we opened up a new food park. Uh, we had all these pop-up, pop-up events, these uh, bazaars. And uh, going naman to uh, Sir Jay's concern also now, why did we open up our water park uh you know as they say um this is the new abnormal right and uh we have to dance with the virus so so long as we're outdoor spaced and masked i think it's uh relatively safe and uh we we can't just halt uh society uh due to covid19 so we have to find a way uh to, to to continue uh one of the things we did is we also waived the governor's fee for all micro and small Uh, and medium enterprises. Now we, we try to make uh, things as easy as possible for our micro and small businesses. As I mentioned, we had the Sari Sari Store program, uh, and then we even had livelihood starter kits, you no, know, uh, to give uh, Ilocanos an opportunity to start uh, anew. You know, because rin po sa kanila ay mga OFWs na pumulik po uh, or umuwi po sa Ilocos Norte. And then, uh, yung mga interest-free loans, meron din po tayo sa mga MSMEs na uh, we're the ones, basically, basically uh, microfinance na kami uh, nagbibigay po ng mga loans mga small businesses. And uh, pay now, work later, and then financial assistance. So, all these things na, na talagang uh, we're We're trying our best uh, to keep everyone afloat. Uh, that's really uh, where the emphasis has been. Uh, and then, of course, the continued uh, support of the agricultural sector and the tourism sector, as mentioned, na talagang powerhouses pa sa aming main industries. All right. Okay, partner, light, lightning round na siguro tayo. Uh, yes. Uh, Governor Matt, napakasimple lamang po. Uh, may mga issues kami sasabihin sa inyo. At uh, sasagutin nyo lamang po ng kung kayo ay pro or anti. Um, ready na po ba kayo? <laughs> as ready as I'll ever be. All right. Like a true sportsman. Okay. Uh, first issue, mandatory vaccination. Are you pro or anti? Anti. Um, I think people should have the right uh, to decide. But uh, I do understand now. 
they will have limited movement you know, in terms of uh, entering certain establishments. Mm-hmm. Kamusta po ang vaccination program dyan sa Ilocos Norte? Gano po ka mataas ba ang uh, hesitancy or in-embrace naman po ng mga Ilocano o mga taga Ilocos Norte ang bakuna? Uh, we're almost uh, at 100% for the first shot, Mom Cheryl. Uh, we were the highest in Region 1 uh, last I checked for the first shot. And uh, medyo most have come around, I think, uh, sadly, dahil po sa surge, no? And sa mga deaths, di ba? Siyempre, nakakatakot. And uh, I think, of course, with with others, with people seeing others getting vaccinated, medyo, siyempre, may uh, social influence na rin. So, uh, hesitancy is a problem, but hindi naman may jerk off. Mm-hmm. Okay, next issue. Pro or anti face-to-face classes in Ilocos Norte? Pro. Uh, we were one of the pilot uh, provinces in Region 1. Uh, especially, we had nine of the ten schools that were open for face-to-face. Uh, I have always been a uh, strong lobbyist, hindi lang po politika, a uh, lobbyist na po for face-to-face education. We can get it done. We have to get it done. Uh, there's a way that we know. Uh, to do it safely and responsibly. Uh, leave it, of course, to the parents kung gusto po nila, uh, and the students kung gusto po nila. But uh, we have to uh, have that option because the social costs are far too high. Kawawa na po ang mga anak po natin na uh, hindi lang po yung mga learning gaps at uh, shortcomings, but even the social skills. Now, these kids need to see other kids and be with them in the classroom, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Disclosure of sal end to the public. Are you pro or anti? Pro and no comment as to why, because I know it's an issue with my uncle. Next. <laughs> 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 explanation, I guess. <laughs> okay. Lagi na lang yun ang tinatanong kasi and uh, ibinubutas sa mga Marcos. So. Okay, next issue, partner. Ito. May explanation din. Political candidates refusing to join debates. Pro or anti? Why? Pro, because it's their right. But uh, of course, I think the uh, people do deserve to hear their the candidates and, and their positions. So uh, I do think uh, candidates should join the main debates uh, so opinions can be heard um, because they're vital. Political dynasty. Are you pro or anti? Pwede ba ako mag-anti? <laughs> Bakit hindi? Of course! I think, I think, I, I think I'd be a hypocrite. Um, pro for the mere fact that uh, we live in a democracy and I think uh, whoever... Um, that, that, that anyone is entitled to run. No? And I think uh, it's uh, very important that... Uh, uh, we remind ourselves that uh, public offices are public trusts and uh, no one is entitled uh, to a position. And that's why these safeguards uh, need to be put in place wherein, uh, you know, uh, political dynasties uh, can be controlled and curtailed, no? It's a great one, but it's not po masama ang uh, political dynasty. It's just that uh, baka naman, there are some dynasties that uh, don't perform uh, up to par. But by its very nature, I don't think it's uh, democratic to outlaw certain candidates. No. All right. We'll just pause for a short break. Stay tuned for our challenge. Dahil nakapag warm up na si Gov, yung ultimate challenge na ang next. You're watching All Politics is Local. We'll be right back. safe and load at your convenience you can load through online remittance and bills payment centers load and bills payment counters and through our load retailers if you have a smart or TNT sim you can also pass a load to your signal prepaid account load now
Welcome back. You're still watching All Politics is Local with us, Ilocos Norte Governor and re-electionist Matthew Marcos Manoto. At kung nakapag-warm up na nga si Gov, eto na ang ating ultimate challenge, Gov. At tatawagin natin itong time out with Coach Manoto. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Dahil ball is life para po kaya Gov Matthew, sabi nga ninyo sa isang panayam, no Gov, you can talk, live, and work in basketball all day long. So, ito ang challenge natin. Kung ikaw ang coach ng isang basketball team at itong mga personalidad natin ang miyembro ng iyong team, ito, sila ang players nyo sa kaninong um, player, PBA or NBA player mo sila maihahambing. <laughs> yung mga sumusunod na personalidad. Comparison. I'm sure, can we open it up to all sports na lang? Let's just say athletes para mahirapan. O oh, sige. O oh, sige. Let's sige. do that. Yes. Yes. Para non-discriminatory naman po tayo. Correct. Correct. Let's do that. Mm-hmm. Unang-una na personality, Gov, President Rodrigo Duterte. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow. Um, hindi na lang basketball yan, Gov, ha? Hmm. Lahat na lang sports. <laughs> Wedding wrestling. <laughs> uh, I think you're setting me up with that one. Uh, <laughs> the one that comes to mind immediately is Draymond Green. <laughs> Draymond. Of uh, the Golden State Warriors. He's right, physical, right. he's outspoken, and uh, he's uh, forceful. Uh, you know, uh, he, he lets his opinions known, uh, wears his emotions on his sleeve, and uh, is effective in his own way. Mm-hmm. VP Lenny Robredo. No comment, po, mahirap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, ano. <laughs> Incomparable, na lang, pwede ba? Incomparable. <laughs> Ewan ko kung malaking challenge or very easy pa- para sa iyo, Gov. Presidential aspirant, Uncle Bongbong Marcos. Hmm. Iisip ng goat yan. <laughs> um, well, I'm a bit biased because uh, I look up to both. But uh, mm-hmm. nasa states pa ako nung nanalo po si President Obama. And I think that, that was one of the hallmarks of his uh, debates na talagang hindi niya... Uh, you know, hindi siya naga engaged in mud slinging and he tried to keep it uh, classy. Kumbaga, diba sabi po ni Michelle Obama, when they go low, we go high. So, uh, siguro, in some ways, no, uh, youthful, uh, dignified, uh, educated, ang uh, dalawa, uh, Uncle Bong and uh, President Obama. Next personality partner, um, Former House Majority Leader Rudy Farinas, yung makakalaban mo. Uh, no comment po, may hirap. Veterano, uh, <laughs> sinong athlete ang veterano ang kilala mo? Uh, <laughs> na um, sabi mo mahirap pa kalaban dahil haba ang kanyang ano, karanasan. Wala. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll play it safe with uh, the controversial one. Sorry, yung uh, kumba. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Safe. <laughs> Ayan, si Kamala Commissioner Rowena Guanzon. <laughs> Honestly, uh, hindi ko pa nakita yung mga interview niya eh. So, hindi ko masabi kung ano yung comparison ko. But uh, I heard she's quite expressive. Uh, so, maybe uh, siguro uh, a player na talagang outspoken sa mga press con niya. Kagaya <laughs> niyo. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> baba? Well, some of the NBA guys siguro na magaling mag-press con um, in their own way. Well, uh, Steph Curry, of course, is always charming <laughs> in his uh, press cons. So, pwede it's, uh, charming. It's kind of a, kind of a reach because it, sometimes it's hard also with uh, the sex of the uh, personality and then gagawin mong NBA player. Um, but uh, trying my best. 
So may pagka-charming din pala si Commissioner uh, Kurwen Agonzon. And honestly, hindi ko pa napanood yung, ano, yung mga press uh-huh. conference. I just keep hearing the news because I try to uh, stay abreast. But uh, uh, si, si Steph lang naisip ko na talagang uh, charming and uh, outspoken sa mga press pa niya. And it seems like everybody loves Steph. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure if the same can be said about uh, Mang Guanzon, but um, for Steph, definitely, parang beloved talaga. Oh, uh, next personality partner, eh, yung kanyang uh, ina, no? Senator Amy Marcos. Sino na isip ng athlete? <laughs> ina. <laughs> this is uh, this is too close to home. <laughs> Sana, this is, this is hard to do lightning. Eh. Sana, I had I had time to prep. Mm-hmm. Um, let's say Sharapova. <laughs> <laughs> Sharapova, huh? Yeah. Bakit, uh, bakit? Okay, curious ako. Tough as nails, focused. Uh, you know, carries weight uh, with what she says and does, but uh, doesn't necessarily... Uh, you know, overdo it. Daanan nga natin bago matapos. Total, pinagpapawisan na si Gov eh. <laughs> Tapos painitin pa natin yung usapin pagdating sa mga pamilya Marcos. Uh-huh. Pwede po bang madaanan natin, um, Gov, itong um, inyong ties with your Uncle Michael Marcos Kion. How is it now? Parang, um, He broke his silence on his rift with Senator Amy Marcos and presidential bet um, uh, Bongbor Marcos Jr. saying that their and their children's decision not to support his re-election bid hurt him. Yeah, well, Mom Cheryl, I've been quite open about this, no? Na, you know, what happened and uh, I even walked people through the chronology of events. I've been quite transparent because I felt that Talagang I owed it to all the Wagenios and Ilocanos to explain, you know. Um, well, uh, unang una, um, in 2019, obviously, when he ascended to the mayorship, um, we were with him all the way, you know, and uh, we were hoping that uh, we could bring about change and improvement in Lawag City. Um, you know, let's, let's just say that things didn't go as planned. And... Uh, Prior to the filing of our uh, COCs, no certificate of candidacies, uh, we were hoping to meet with him and to talk to him. But uh, to be honest, uh, we were rebuffed, basically ignored uh, after you know uh, decades of uh, you know friendship and uh, support. Uh, he, he chose not to speak to us and uh, filed his uh, candidacy for mayor. Talagang uh, unbeknownst uh, to us all and uh, caught us by surprise. Um, well, you know, I, I wish him the best. He's still my tita, as I've said. And, uh, you know, um, siguro, as they say, you know, uh, business is not personal. Siguro, uh, same rings true with politics, no? Uh, I wish him the best uh, on a personal note, but uh, we've um, endorsed uh, Vice Mayor Lasso. I was with him in the Sangguning Panalawigan then. And I believe that he really can do uh, much good for the city of Lawag. And uh, we hope that he'll be given uh, that opportunity. Let's just ask the director, partner. Um... Why should the I know why should the people of Ilocos Norte vote for you or re-elect mm-hmm. you, uh, Governor Mac? Well, uh, Sir Jay Seguro, uh, let's put aside na lang my uh, middle name, and uh, I hope they can uh, judge me for the last uh, two and a half years. No, um, I think that's the most important thing, and uh, if they're happy with uh, how I perform, and if I was able to cater to their basic uh, needs. Then, uh, sana naman, no? I can uh, uh, continue uh, the progress and the momentum that we currently have. Uh, last question lang for Governor Matt. Bago natin bitawan. Um, kayo ba ni, ni Sandro, who is also running sa 2022 elections, nag-uusap ba kayo? 
do, do you talk about uh, kasi yung uh, third generation ng mga Marcos uh, Siyempre, bihira din nating marinig, no? Ano talaga ang uh, mga thoughts nila sa mga nangyayari. But, I mean, pareho kayong tumatakbo, pareho kayong politiko na pinakabagong henerasyon ng mga Marcos. Do you compare notes? Do you talk, talk to each other, uh, Gov? Yes, Sir Jay, of course. Kasi kasama ka rin po, umiikot po kami, no? Kasi first district po siya uh, while he's running in the first district, I should say. At uh, sinasamahan ko po no? uh, sa pag-ikot kasi syempre uh, there are two districts in Ilocos Norte so that's also part of my uh, uh, jurisdiction. Kumbaga, no? So we go around together mm-hmm. and uh, I'd like to think na medyo uh, big brother or older cousin oh. uh, role ang, uh, is, is what I'm playing for him no? um If you consider right. yourself uh, a reluctant politician, si Sandro parang hindi ano? Parang mahilig eh. <laughs> That's how I see him. Your uh, keen observation <laughs> appears to be accurate, Sir Jay. You know, masasabi ko. But you're right. Uh, amongst my generation uh, in the Marcos family, we are eight boys, no girls. And uh, uh, I always say that uh, I was the first fool to take the plunge. <laughs> At uh, ngayon naman po. Uh, at least may, uh, may pinsan na ako na sasama sa akin sana. Do you see yourself uh, entering national politics? Uh, to be honest, Sir Jay, uh, siguro maybe Congress at most, but I have uh, absolutely no aspirations or desires for anything uh, so-called above Congress. Uh, Sinabi din niya ng uncle mo, ha? <laughs> Sabi ni... Um... So, time will tell, Sir Jay, but, uh, uh, you know, I'm, uh, you, you know, something that interests me, though, is the intersection of sports and uh, government. I uh, have been experienced both worlds. Uh, I interned at uh, OJT pa ako sa PSC under uh, Chairman Butch Ramirez uh, one of my summers. I think it was my freshman year summer in college. And uh, that's uh, becoming uh, increasingly Uh, attractive to me, no? given my background. Po. And uh, I'd really love to return to sports, uh, help our Filipino athletes. Um, you know, I think uh, Manny Pangilinan, uh, who I think is uh, boss ba natin, masasabi natin, uh, you know, has been so instrumental in uh, helping uh, Filipino athletes. And uh, I've worked with the MVP group because uh, of my background in the PBA, uh, TNT, uh, Moralco, and Lex, of course, and uh, the MVP Sports Foundation. So, Uh, how I wish na nasa sports lang po ako. Uh, um, you know, I look forward to ret- uh, becoming more active in sports. All right. Uh, well, thank you for joining us in this episode. Ilocos Norte Governor and Re-Electionist Matthew Marcos Manoto. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for having me. And I hope to welcome everyone to Ilocos Norte. Tourism is open and uh, we hope to see you soon to enjoy the sand dunes, the windmill, South Beach, and our World-renowned empanada. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> okay, we've asked the questions and gotten to know your candidates a little bit better. Ilocos Norte, you decide. I'm Jay Taruk. And I'm Cheryl Posim. Join us tomorrow for another episode of All Politics is Local. programang mapapanood ngayong lunes ng gabi sa 1